Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog Volleyball. And with us, Head Coach Tia Branda Wilhelm. Coach, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. Obviously, uh, your season well underway. A couple uh, wow, yeah. big weekends already of volleyball action against uh, some, some very good competition. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're eight matches in already. Um, we've played six teams that are in that national ranking, getting votes kind of area. So like top 30-ish in, in the country. And yeah, it's been quite a schedule already. Obviously, uh, you started off your season late August at home, the annual Ferris State Invitational, yeah. and 10 teams take a part in that event, and you were able to go 4-0. and just, just talk about that weekend as a whole. You know, it was a great weekend. There was just, there was some really good volleyball, um, both courts. We had, you know, 10 teams is a, a couple more than we usually have, but it was just really nice to have such a quality of teams that we had, and a and pretty good diversity of teams, too. So. It, you know, it was just really neat to, to have that experience. And obviously, um, we we're super excited to play well in front of our home crowd and, you know, to start off the season. That was a big focus for us to start off strong, and, and we certainly did that. Obviously, uh, you mentioned some of those teams receiving votes or in the national rankings. Winona yeah. State, uh, you were able to beat them. Uh, that was a nationally ranked team, and obviously the number one team. Uh, you took out Concordia St. Paul, but big regional win as well as we see the highlights uh, against Hillsdale here. Yeah, um, all of those, you know, Hills, all the four teams that we played, Upper Iowa, Concordia St. Paul, Winona, and Hillsdale, are all in that area of getting votes or in the national rankings, so they're all really strong teams, um, and, and it was you know, it was all four of them count as regional opponents, even though only Hillsdale's actually in our region. So we're pretty excited to get those wins and to get those those uh, quality of teams on our strength of schedule for sure. Obviously, one of your key returning players, Allison Kappel, the GLIAC Player of the Year last year, uh, back for you and named the National Player of the Week after that opening weekend. Yes, yeah, she did really well out of the gate. She really did. Um, she's worked really hard in the spring to uh, grow her game a little bit and and she's certainly not a kid that rests on you know being player of the year as a sophomore is a pretty big deal and that's not at all a thing like she just works so hard every single day to get better and she's always trying to improve her game and to find the little areas that she can be better. Obviously a good mix of returning talent but some young kids uh, that saw their first action uh, there yeah. in front of the home fans. Yeah we have four new kids this year um, three freshmen and transfer and yeah, the three freshmen have all played and gotten in the game and had some pretty good moments and, yeah, doing doing quite well. Obviously, after that opening weekend, uh, you hit the road, a long trip to Florida, and uh, took on some some strong competition uh, here this past weekend. Yeah, and, and we didn't do great. It wasn't a good weekend for us, that's for sure. Um, I think that, you know, a number of things happened, um, but we we definitely, we you know, we lost a couple matches, but... Even more so, we just didn't play well in a couple of the matches, so it was a little disappointing to have that experience. How, how much of a learning experience will that be for your kids uh, here, two kind of different weekends in terms of the results? Yeah, um, November, I'll let you know. Uh, you know, hopefully it's a huge learning experience for us. Hopefully it's an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, to really see what we need to get better at. We're certainly more focused in practice after a one and three weekend than we were with a four and a weekend. So hopefully it ends up being a really good thing for us. Obviously uh, those uh, results you had over the past couple weekends, some big matches that prepare you for the, the start of conference play, which starts this week. Already, uh, I know. Taking on Wisconsin Parkside, Purdue Northwest. Uh, just talk about this uh, week and these opponents. Yeah, these are two opponents that are really scary. I mean, they both have a bunch of players back from last year and we don't know a lot about them. We've only played Purdue Northwest the one time last year and it was the first match of the season. And um, we have not played Wisconsin Parkside in conference play ever because they're new. Um, and we've only played them a few times over the past 10 years. So we don't really know the programs, either one of them at all. So it's, it's a little scary for us going in. We just don't really know as much what to expect. Obviously, uh, coming into the GLIAC uh, schedule and the GLIAC race, uh, after you've seen some of these early season results, uh, some, some GLIAC teams that have done very well here uh, early on. For sure, yeah. We probably got about six, seven teams in the GLIAC that are really have started off well in the non-conference part and, and have won some really huge games. So it's going to be quite an exciting race. Stepping up uh, into conference play, does uh, this uh, mean a little bit more in terms of some of the matches and, and the results you hope to have? Um, I think hopefully every time we play, it means a lot to the players. But um, I think as a team, you know, we understand the level of play that we have to play in the GLIAC and the consistency that you have to do every night. And so, and, and we know, you know, we know how good the GLIAC is and how many, how many teams have, you know, their whole roster back or everybody but one player. So... Um, we, we know that we really have to get focused and ready to go for every single GLIAC match that we play. 
how nice is it to be able to, to start your conference season uh, here at home in front of the home fans where you've, you've yeah, drawn so well? Yeah. Anytime we can play at home, we're excited. You know, we have such a great fan base and, you know, people from the community, people from campus, faculty, staff, student athletes. Um, it's just a great fan base. So anytime we can play at home for our fans, we are excited to do that for sure. What will be some uh, keys for your team, uh, hopefully, to get up to a great start here in the conference with a couple wins this weekend? Well, I think that, you know, we have to really be on the video and make sure that we get a good visual of the teams that we're playing. I think that's going to be the biggest part. And then both of these teams are pretty persistent teams, um, high energy teams. So we're going to have to, you know, really be able to weather the storms of some really, you know, five, six great rallies or swings in a row and just be able to weather that storm as we play in the match. Obviously, uh, getting off to a, a big start in the, the conference uh, goes a long way towards some oh, of your, yeah. your regional implications and a, a challenging region again uh, here this season. Yeah, the region is going to be really, really good. I think we'll probably be, you know, I would say uh, right now it looks like 12 to 14 teams deep where, you know, any of those teams could you know, make it into the top eight, which is it's really deep for a region. So it's definitely going to be tough. Obviously, uh, some teams that you've played uh, here already in the, the first couple of weeks yeah. that uh, are teams that uh, certainly prepare you well for some of those big regional matches that you'll have throughout the year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've already played Hillsdale and Drury both in region, and you know, both of those are just great teams. So, and then in our conference play, we'll play. You know, there'll be a number of teams that will be in that mix of regional rankings. So it's it's going to be kind of a fight every night. Obviously, a great nucleus coming back from last season. Uh, talk about the the kids you have coming back and, and how much. Uh, what they were able to achieve last season uh, helped you coming into this year? Yeah, I think, you know, we graduated five from last year, and that's, you know, it's a big loss for the team for sure. Um, we, you know, we have Allison on the outside and Courtney Brewer on the outside coming back. Um, we have Kayla Rossman back as a DS, and Katie Plasek, who's been an outsider right side hitter for us, is now at the libero spot. So, and, and then Maeve Grimes in the right side or, or in the setting position. Um, those are all players that you know were out on the court quite a bit and are back for us this year. Michaela Carey is in the middle, has not much played until this point. You know, she's played a little bit on the right side, but very little in the middle. Um, and she's, you know, she's really worked hard to, to get herself ready to be in the middle. Um, and then the same with Katie O'Connell. She's playing a lot on the right side um, and, and has not played as much um, until this year. So it's kind of some new stuff out there. Well, Coach, best of luck to the Bulldogs this weekend. Thank you. Weekend. That'll do it for Ferris Sports Update. You can follow all the action at ferrisstatebulldogs.com. Have a great week.